Hey guys, I'm John Setzler, and welcome back to the Kamado Joe Cooking Channel. Today, we've got a special treat. We're not gonna cook today, we're gonna talk. And what we're gonna talk about is the one thing that sets us apart from everybody else and every other kind of cooking. And that one thing is Yes, folks, it is smoke. Smoke is the spice that we control. Smoke is the flavor that we bring to the table with most of the things that we cook on a Kamado. And smoke is like any other spice. You can have too little or too much. And learning to control the smoke, learning to put the right amount of smoke to whatever you're cooking is all part of the art that we call Kamado grilling. The first method we use to bring smoke to the table is our hardwood lump charcoal. And this is a very, actually it's a very clean burning uh, source of fuel for your grill. And it does produce smoke. It does not produce a whole lot of smoke. This is a very light smoke that you get from this. And it's enough for some things that you'll cook and not enough for others. The second method we use to bring smoke to our cooks are wood chunks. And you can see that these are roughly fist sized chunks. Uh, use different types of wood. You might use something like apple or cherry. You might use maple, hickory, uh, mesquite, oak, or a host of other types of wood chunks. And you just place some of these in your charcoal to get smoke into your cook. And the third method you can use is wood chips. These are smaller versions of the chunks that we just looked at. And there are some situations where you might want to use wood chips. Like if you want a really small amount of smoke or if you want to spread the smoke uh, distribution out throughout a longer cook, some of these uh, spread throughout your charcoal can help with that. But these are all usually available in the same wood formats that you would get as the chunks like your hickory, your mesquite, your maple, cherry, apple, you know, whatever. Since smoke is a spice as we look at it, it brings two things to everything you cook. It brings a flavor and it brings an aroma. And the two sometimes are hard to distinguish, but the smoke taste doesn't vary as much among the different types of smoking wood you use it doesn't vary as much as the aroma. The aroma that you get from a light uh, type of smoking wood, like cherry for instance, is a, a, a very sweet aroma compared to a more acrid aroma that you would get from hickory and a more acrid taste. The smoking woods that are most common are, the, we'll start with the lighter woods, and these woods, go. we're gonna go up the scale in intensity. You have a flavor intensity variation from all of these smoking woods. The lighter of the smoking woods, let's start with cherry for instance. That's a very light intensity smoking wood. It does not produce as significantly high amount of smoke flavor like an equal amount of hickory would produce. So cherry is considered a light smoking wood with a light sweet aroma. As we move up the scale you have apple, which is another fruit that's a slightly more intense fruit than cherry, and it has a different aroma. It's, it's still a kind of a sweet aroma, but it's a different aroma, but the smoke intensity is higher with apple than it is with cherry. You come on up the ladder another rung, we'll look at oak. Oak is kind of a mid-range. It has a higher intensity than apple, and it has a different aroma that's not sweet. It's, a, it's more of a, I guess you could call it a savory aroma. And we move up another step from there to hickory. Hickory has a more intense smoke flavor than oak, and it has a higher aroma as well, a more sharp aroma. Move up another step from there to mesquite, Mesquite has a very intense smoke flavor and a very intense aroma as well. So in order to compare these, you could take a look, maybe let's say if you have one fist size chunk 
of hickory and one fifth size chunk of cherry. Uh, they're both basically the same size chunk of wood, but that one chunk of hickory, since it's a more intense smoke, is going to produce a smokier profile on the food you are cooking than that same size piece would if it was cherry, since there's a, a very big intensity difference between the two woods. Learning to choose the right amount of smoking wood is something that comes with experience when you're cooking with smoke. One of the most important things you can learn as a novice smoker is that less is more. And I learned this from one of the masters in the barbecue world, Mr. Harry Sue. I went to a Harry Sue's barbecue cooking school out in Southern California several years ago, and I learned a lot. And one of the most important things I think that I learned was that less is more when it comes to smoke. As a novice smoker, I like to put a lot of smoke to the things I was cooking. I wanted to see smoke coming out of the top of my grill all the time. I want, If I didn't see smoke coming out of the grill, I didn't think I was getting smoke. And one of the things I quickly learned is that I was over smoking about everything I cooked. A lot of the people that were eating my barbecue never really complained about it, but I know looking back on it now that that stuff was over smoked. It was, it was highly intensely smoked because I wanted to see that smoke coming out of the top of the grill all the time. It's not necessary to do that. It actually tastes better if you back off on that a little bit. You don't want to over smoke your food. Most of the people who don't eat smoked food as frequently as you and I might are, are more sensitive to the smoke flavor than we are. We develop, uh, we lose our sensitivity to it over time, just like a chili head does. That Somebody who eats chili all the time loses that sensitivity to the heat factor. Well, the same thing applies to us when it comes to smoke. We get used to it and we don't, we're desensitized to it where other people uh, are really sensitive to the amount of smoke you use. So you have to learn to find that balance. And in the beginning, I always recommend less is more. Every time you smoke something in the beginning, you wanna start out with a small amount of smoking wood and see what your results are like. Uh, use two chunks of wood the first time you cook a Boston butt, two chunks of whatever, whichever uh, wood style you choose to go with, uh, two or three maybe, and see what you think, see what your results are like, see if you if it's not smoky enough the next time you cook it, add another chunk, add one chunk, or add two chunks, or if it's too smoky, take one back. You, you also learn during this process that different types of meat absorb smoke differently a Boston butt or a beef brisket can take a lot of smoke. You can put, you know, four or five, six big chunks of smoking wood in for those, and you most likely won't over smoke it unless you're just highly sensitive to the smoke. But if you put that same amount of smoking wood uh, in a turkey, in for a turkey or a chicken or a turkey breast, uh, you will not be happy with the results. It will be acrid because chicken and poultry take on smoke at a much higher rate than big cuts of beef and big cuts of pork. So like I said here, once again, experience is gonna be your guide here. We're also frequently asked what type of smoking wood works best with what kind of food. And this is a very personal choice. It's a very preferential choice. A lot of people like different smoke profiles with different foods, but to begin with, just to get started with some basics, I would recommend uh, let's talk about poultry first. When, we're, when I say poultry, we're looking at chicken, tur chicken and turkey primarily, and duck if you cook duck. Duck takes on smoke a little slower than tur turkey and chicken, so you want to start out with one chunk of whichever smoking wood you choose to use. I recommend a light smoking wood like cherry, apple, or even peach for your first poultry cook. Uh, oak maybe, but I think if you go to hickory or mesquite, you may end up with a very heavy smoky, smoke profile that you won't like as much. Work, work your way up from a lighter intensity smoke wood to start with to your more intense smoke woods. Try one chunk, and if you don't think that works out well, add more the next time you cook one. But start out with a light one. With a Boston butt or ribs, a pork spare ribs or baby back ribs, uh, I recommend two to three chunks of wood to start with, just like I said, to get a feel for where the smoke, where your smoke 
profile fits. Uh, you can use any kind of smoking wood with ribs or Boston bud. It's once again, it's going to be whichever the whichever aroma you like best. The flavor is not going to change a whole lot. The intense, like I said, the intensity of the smoke changes, but the flavor doesn't. But the aroma changes with the various types of wood. If you want a sweeter a smoke aroma, which I think works best with pork, since pork naturally has a sweetness to it, I recommend apple and peach. Those are my two favorite woods to smoke pork with. Um, beef brisket uh, is a big, hearty cut of beef, and I think it's really hard to beat beef brisket with uh, a smoke profile that you would get from oak or even pecan has a good smoke profile for beef. Uh, hickory and mesquite do work well with beef. And once again, you're going to want to start out with maybe two to three chunks of smoking wood for that beef brisket and see how that works for you the first time and try it out. Uh, if you if you're, would like to have more smoke, add additional smoking wood the next time you cook one. Don't try to add it as you go. It's hard to do this during a single cook. You're going to want to spread it out across multiple cooks. Give it a try and see what you think before you change anything. You do not need to see smoke coming out of the top of your grill all the time for smoke to be in there. You have to just trust me on that. There is smoke in that grill at all times, even if you don't see it coming out of the top of the grill. It's there. It's coming from your smoking wood that's in there, and it's also coming from the hardwood lump charcoal. You don't have to see it. If you see smoke, if you see white smoke coming out of the top of your grill for the entire cook, your ch chances are your smoke profile is going to be very heavy and it's going to be what we call over smoked. And also some of the smoke that you're going to see coming out of the grill is not from the smoking wood. If you've got a beef brisket or a butt dripping in your grill, dripping fat as it cooks, that's going to produce some smoke also. But you can tell the difference between that smoke and your wood smoke by the aroma. The fat uh, smoke aroma does not smell like the wood smoke. And you'll get the wood smoke smell. You'll understand what that wood smoke smells like when you first fire up your grill and when you first put that wood on there. I encourage you to take a whiff of that. Once you see that smoke start coming out of the grill from the smoking wood that you put in there, become familiar with the aroma that that wood type has. And it will be no time at all till you'll be able to identify what wood smoke you're smelling just by smelling it. Uh, you won't have to know what somebody actually put on their grill. You'll say that guy's smoking with hickory or they're smoking with apple or they're smoking with peach. You'll become familiar with what those wood smell, those smoke profiles smell like as you go and you'll it'll become second nature to you fish is another uh, matter it's a de it's a very delicate you want to use a very delicate smoke profile with fish because it absorbs smoke very quickly also you want to definitely stick with the lighter woods cherry and peach are two excellent woods to smoke fish with if you want to put hickory to uh, a woods a fish smoke or mesquite use a very, very tiny amount of it. And I'll give you a little tip here of how to control smoke in small amounts. One great way to produce a small amount of smoke is take a piece of aluminum foil and fold it up into a pouch. Just fold it over, fold the edges in, and create a little pouch and inside that pouch we're going to open that guy up and we're going to insert you could insert as few as two wood chips or maybe even three put those wood chips in there press all the air out fold it over where there's little to no air inside of there and poke one or two small holes in the foil. That's all you need. One, maybe three very tiny holes. And what you're gonna do is you'll set this pouch on top of your charcoal that's burning and let it have, you know, 15 minutes or so and this will start producing smoke. And it will smoke for a very long time like that. It'll produce an excellent amount of smoke over a period of time that you're gonna cook something like fish without burning the, the wood chips up. 
you don't have to soak these wood chips in water either. If you use this method and put them in the foil, all the air that would cause these chips to catch on fire and burn up quickly is, is gone. There's nothing, no way that those chips are going to catch on fire. They're going to do nothing but smoke. So this is a perfect way to work with wood chips and get a long amount of smoke out of a small amount of wood. So since we talked on the subject there of soaking wood chips, you can soak wood chips if you want to. If you want to put, put them in water for an hour or two before you put them in your firebox, that's fine. But it doesn't make any difference to me. I've, I've done it that, that way. I prefer this foil method because that's going, to keep, that's going to get the most smoke possible out of those wood chips without them catching on fire and burning up. If you use that method, you don't, have, don't ever have to worry about soaking the chip. And if you do soak the chip, that's only going to add maybe five minutes uh, to the longevity of that chip in a firebox. It's either going to dry that water out very quickly, and then it's going to catch on fire and burn up, or it's just going to burn up. Use the foil method. You can do that exact same method with the chunks. If you've got a chunk like this, and you want to add smoke to a cook that's cooking hotter, let's say you're you're uh, gonna let's say you're going to grill a couple of steaks. Uh, Steaks are done at high temperature, and if you throw this wood chunk on that really hot bed of charcoal, it's going to catch on fire, and it's not going to produce enough smoke for you to get anything out of it on your steaks. But if you do this, if you wrap that in foil, just like we did the chips, and poke one or two small, small holes in that foil, toss that in on your burning charcoal, this thing won't be able to catch on fire. It'll just smoke, and it'll produce smoke for you for that high temperature cook. You don't need to soak it. Don't, don't even waste your time soaking these in water. It's, it's not worth it. Another fascinating thing about smoke that's a, a fun topic for discussion and debate is that uh, elusive smoke ring that everybody talks about. Everybody judges the quality of barbecue by that smoke ring. And I'm going to put a picture up here on the side of the screen to show you what I'm talking about. There's a red ring around the meat, and everybody looks at that as smoke penetration into the meat. Uh, well, first of all, I'm not going to dig into the science. I'm not going to get into the science of what's going on here. There are plenty, if you go search the internet for smoke ring formation, you'll find tons of great articles on this subject, but that is not smoke penetration into the meat. It is a chemical reaction that is produced as a result of the combustion of wood in your grill. Uh, you can cheat the smoke ring process. Uh, you can add pink curing salt to your rub, just a small amount of pink curing salt, and that'll put a beautiful smoke ring on your meat, whether there was any smoke present or even whether there was any fire present. So that just goes to show you that the smoke ring doesn't do anything for the flavor of your meat. It's just something that happens naturally as a result of the combustion of the wood in the cooking chamber. And uh, the smoke ring's pretty. Everybody likes to get that. And you can have that too, and you will have that. But you'll occasionally get some cooks where you get a very weak or a non-existent smoke ring. But like I said, that has nothing to do with flavor. It has nothing to do with the smoke flavor, the smoke penetration, or any of that. So don't worry about it. It's something that will happen. You'll get it. It'll come along. But it's not got anything to do with the quality of your cook or the flavor of the meat that you've produced. So when it comes time to fire up your grill, uh, everybody's seen how we fill our firebox up with charcoal. There's several ways you can do this if you want to add smoking wood to your cook. And if you're going to do a longer, low and slow cook, I recommend, you know, two to three, maybe four pieces, four chunks to start with to get like I said to get that feel and what I would do is put a little bit of charcoal in your firebox and then put two chunks in and then put some more charcoal in and put two more chunks on top of that where your wood chunks are distributed throughout the charcoal so as that charcoal burns it will burn out and it will keep you'll have at least one of those wood chunks producing smoke you know for most of your cook if not all of it you can do the same thing with chips. You can disperse chips throughout there, but like I said, be careful. Don't put too much. Air on the side of less rather than more. Work up from a, a, a baseline. Don't start out with too much. Take it easy, and like I said, less is more. This is a subject that I could talk for hours on, so 
I think I've given you a pretty good baseline here of, of how, what to do, what to look for, how to get it started. If you have any questions about smoke or, or specific questions, leave me a question, leave me a comment on this video. Uh, show us uh, if you have a question about you know what pairs well. You know, like I said, I can give you a suggestion, but I, I recommend trying stuff. Try everything. Don't worry about what somebody tells you pairs well with fish or pairs well with chicken. Try what you like. You know, try it all. Try it. Every time you do a chicken for the first six or seven times you cook a whole chicken, try a different smoking wood and see what results you like the best. See what your friends and family that you're feeding like. Uh, experiment with smoke. Uh, don't. There's nothing that says you have to do it this way or do it my way. Create your own way, but like I said, work from a baseline. Start low and build up. Don't start with too much and come back down. It's easier to make changes, small changes incrementally as you go up. So leave us a comment on the video if you have any questions about smoke. I'll see if I can provide you a quick and easy answer. And uh, have fun. You know, smoke everything. Until next time, this is John Setzler with Kamado Joe Cooking Channel.